I'm joined by Congressman Jared Moskowitz. Congress is back in session. It was a very big night last night with Vice President Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. I'm just curious what the buzz is like on Capitol Hill today, Congressman. Yeah, what a way to uh, come back to the 118th, uh, 118th Congress. No, I mean, look, last night's debate, I think, went exactly uh, according to plan uh, for, uh, for the Trump people. Uh, right. They, they came out there and, and they said, you know, we're going to keep them focused. We're going to keep them on policy. We're going to keep them away from the personalities. Uh, and he went out there and he said, they're eating dogs. So, I mean, if you needed if you need a, just a recap, if you don't want to spend the 90 minutes watching the debate, if you didn't catch, you just need a recap. Uh, we were only about 14 minutes in until he's talked about people eating dogs and cats and pets. So uh, if you're a Republican coming back to Capitol Hill today, uh, getting back to the three weeks of session here, trying to figure out how we're going to keep the government open, by the way, uh, last night was not a great day for you. Let's talk about, though, what these MAGA Republicans in the House are posting, though. You have uh, Jim Jordan, who runs the House Judiciary GOP account and often reposts himself, but posting these weird AI memes of Donald Trump holding ducks and kittens because they're spreading this lie, which has been debunked by. Yeah, it was all reasons. it was all fun and games until Donald Trump actually said it live in the debate. <laughs> but, you know, every day there's a new one. I mean, there was they were saying that last week it was that uh, Colorado has been taken over completely by Venezuelan gangs and that the Hell's Angels were going to come in because it just created this fantasy world. And this is the House Judiciary GOP account posting uh, photos like this. I mean, you know, as, as you mentioned, you know, there's potentially a government shutting down because Donald Trump wants uh, to harm us. But like just before we get there, what do you make of like this photo and what your colleagues are doing when they got back? Well, first, let me say this. You know, last week <clears throat> we had a horrific shooting. Uh, in Georgia, another one in a school, kids, teachers getting gunned down in school, getting killed. And my Republican colleagues continue to, to say that's a fact of life, right? That's, that's it. We just, have to, we just have to deal with it. We don't want to try to address it. We don't want to figure out a, a, a delicate balance, protecting people's Second Amendment rights and addressing uh, gun violence in schools. No, we're just going to, it's the facts of life. But then a fake rumor circulates about a guy eating a duck from a park, and it's DEFCON 1 for the Republicans. I mean, it's mass hysteria, you know, uh, because a duck, a duck got eaten uh, at a park, which was false, of course. Uh, and it just, for me, it really showed that it, we're just, it's just silly. We're, we're in silliness up here, okay? Uh, to think that that's what actually Americans care about. And again, they were having a great time with all their memes, Donald Trump with the cats and the dogs, and he's hugging them. It was really great, except, you know, no one forgot to tell Donald that, hey, you, Twitter's not real life. Like, social media is not real. He went out there and actually actually led with it. He led with the, they're eating the pets, you know. Um, I mean, what a, what a debate, you know. And, and to think, right, like, Kamala's strategy was not, it wasn't a hidden strategy. They were literally telling people, hey, we're going to go out there and we're going to try to get under Donald Trump's skin. This is the strategy. We're going to get under his skin and we're going to let Donald be Donald. And the flip side of that, the Donald Trump strategy was also very public. We're going to make sure we don't let her get under our skin. And literally 11 minutes in, she goes crowd size and he goes, Victor Orban, they're eating puppies and cats, Abdul, concepts of plans, executing babies. Uh, I, I mean, it, it, it was like diarrhea of the mouth as soon as she said crowd size. Um, I, I mean, I, have, I can't actually recall telegraphing your plan, letting your opponent know what your plan is, your opponent prepping against your plan, and then within a second of launching your plan, your opponent falling for it immediately. A and it was over and over. By the way, that question was on immigration. The question was on immigration. He pivoted to crowd size and he fell for it and didn't even talk about immigration in that two minute answer. Her strategy was great. 
it was no defense. It was offense all the time. We've talked about that, Ben, right? Offense and pivot, offense and pivot. And she did that and it worked. Uh, and, you know, look, I, I, I obviously thought it was a complete win from a debate standpoint uh, for, for Kamala Harris. I, we'll have to see, obviously, you know, over the next 55 days, how that works out. Well, you talk about in the different committees you sit on, talk about the House Oversight Committee, uh, investigating issues of incredible importance to our national security. I think to your point right there, where you can actually telegraph your strategy to Donald Trump, say what you're going to do, let him know you're going to bait him, and then bait him also goes to another level, though, right, of national security. And if Vice President Kamala Harris showed how easy he could be manipulated in front of everybody, um, just think about also what foreign leaders are doing to him. And also she would point that out during the debate as well, where she would say, you know what, these foreign leaders, they laugh at you. They know how weak you are. The military generals, our military generals, they tell me what a weak and pathetic person you are. There's that level to it also. He's a national security threat, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, look, anyone who watches that debate, and again, you know, he, this is something I'm sure they practiced. I have no doubt that his debate coaches said, hey, let's not talk about the mistake you made during the broadcasters where you questioned whether she was black and then all your Republican colleagues went and followed you with the, she's Indian, she's black, which that's how it works. You can be half and half. Uh, I, I'm sure they practice it. And then immediately they asked the question and he goes, look, I read she was black and then I read she was not black. And so I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you, you see someone answer that and you think to yourself, this guy's got to deal like with real problems. Like we do have issues in this country, domestically, abroad. Okay. Like it, it, they wanted a reference. Like, hey, Donald Trump, give us a reference. Who, who out there? He's like, perfect. I'm going to nail this one. Victor Orban. He's my guy. He says I'm great. <laughs> like he's so easily manipulated by the strong man who know all they got to give Donald is flattery, and then Donald just loves them back and is willing to give away the kitchen sink. Um, and so, you know, then he was like, I love this idea. He's like, you know, all of those dictators, they're scared of me. By the way, so is half of the country. <laughs> they're scared of you too, Donald. I, like, I wouldn't keep bragging about how people are scared of you. Um, you know, that's not really a, a good talking point. But then he goes into the spin room, right? He goes into the spin room afterwards. He's like, listen. By the way, there was a very important point that I wanted to make that I didn't get to make up there. They're eating dogs. <laughs> like, it's just, it's crazy that this is, this is what we saw last night. And I, I really think you saw what you do when you prep for a debate. She clearly prepped. She clearly had a team. And I think Donald probably winged it a little more. And I don't know that there'll be another debate. Uh, and we always question how much debates matter or don't matter. But if people were questioning whether or not independents out there were questioning, like, we don't know Kamala well, like, can, do we see her as president? She was on even keel with Trump from a prosecutorial standpoint. She took it to him, which is what we've been saying. She was on offense. She explained her economic positions. Uh, and I think that that question, if ha someone had it, I didn't, but if someone had it, that question has now, uh, now been answered. Let's talk about this GOP uh, subpoena right now, House Oversight Committee of Governor Walls. That's how they want to spend their time as once again we're approaching another government shutdown. Oh, hold on. When's the Biden impeachment? Uh, did I miss that? Are we not doing – when's the vote? Hey, James, when are we voting? Yeah, I, I, I think that James Comer's too busy um, writing the epilogue to his book that uh, he's uh, not going to be focused on that right now. But – you have uh, th their priority now is subpoenaing Governor Walls, subpoenaing the judges on Trump's cases. Yeah, Governor Walls, he's a Chinese spy. Like when I look at him and Gwen, I think, oh, absolutely, Chinese spy. So what are we thinking, though? I mean, the, this government shutdown, what should the American people know? You have Donald Trump saying, shut it down. Um, don't support any continuing resolution unless it meets my requirements, which Donald Trump says is all are his lies about the elections. Um, we saw MAGA Mike Johnson give a number of interviews yesterday where he seemed to suggest that he agrees with 
whatever Donald Trump's saying. W- what's going to happen here and what should the American people know? Yeah, it's a, it's a total mess, Ben. They have no plan, or I should say, actually, they have concepts of a plan. Uh, but th- there's no path at the moment. Trump is telling them to shut it down. And I had actually thought to myself, if the debate went really well for Donald, they wouldn't want to rock the boat. But now that this debate went very poorly, they may want to kind of shock the system uh, and change the narrative. And so I'm worried uh, that, you know, again, unless the speaker comes to the Democrats, where we've been the adults in the room, we kept us from going off the debt ceiling, we kept us from closing the government three times, we made sure Ukraine got their aid, Israel got their aid, like we've had to be the adult in the room. If he comes to us with a clean CR, we'll do it again. But it's very unclear. Donald Trump is the one who's going to tell Speaker Johnson what to do or not do. And so, you know, we got a stable genius, uh, not only running for president, but also now controlling the House of Representatives. And they they really don't know what they're going to do yet. Congressman, what's the end game, though? They, they want to shut down so that the economy gets harmed and then Trump can say, I alone can fix it. I, 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 I don't I don't know. I mean, maybe they if you know, they want to you know shut the government down, hurt the economy and then prices will fall on sofas like I, I don't know what they're doing. I, I mean, it's just so silly <laughs> what's going on. And, and the American people need to see they're not serious. They're just not serious. We can disagree on solutions, but they, they're not even proposing to do anything here. They're not here to help the American people. This is a show for the next three weeks. I, I mean, it, it, it's just, you know, think about it, right? We, we, we stopped about this Biden thing, and now we're opening up new investigations with only three weeks to go. The Americans see through that, right? They, they see that that's just a waste of taxpayer money abusing the system. When for three weeks, we could actually do something and do something on a bipartisan basis. There are things that we can do to help the American people, but nope, no, we're not, we're not, we're not going to do that. So it's, I, Ben, I, you, you're asking me to explain uh, insanity. Uh, and, you know, I, I, it's tough for me to get in the mind of Speaker Johnson, who right now is not in control of the House. It's, it's Donald Trump. Well, let me show you this picture. I'll ask you to react to it as we conclude our interview. Um, I'll show you the photo. Would love your reaction. It's of uh, Stephen Miller and Matt Gates leaving the debate last night. Take a look at how they're looking. Uh, what's your response? I mean, it look, looks like it went according to plan. I mean, I, I think everyone looks fine there. I mean, they always look like that. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Congressman Moskowitz, thank you for uh, for joining us today. And, uh, well, and Ben, let back. me just say one more thing, because, you know, people are issuing statements, you know, about about the debate. And it's been really hard uh, for for me to get there. But I think based on the disastrous performance of the former president last night, uh, it was really hard to watch, I think. And he really needs to think about whether he should continue as the Republican nominee. But I want to give him and his family space uh, to, to, to make that decision. Um, we have your statement here that we will uh, put up. It's a very serious and somber moment, I'm sure, yeah. for you to have to make it's that statement. It's time for compassion. It's time for compassion. It's time for compassion. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Congressman Moskowitz. Subscribe. Let's hit 4 million subscribers and have a good one. Real quick, Meta just changed their algorithm to suppress political content. Please follow our Instagram at Midas Touch right now as we head towards 400,000 followers so you don't miss a beat.